we are in front of Chateau Margaux, which is a first growth, classified in 1855, but with a much longer history. Chateau Margaux was founded somewhere in the Middle Age, so this is many centuries ago, um, and since then has always um, looked for excellence in its wine. The story of uh, the family and the chateau is uh, quite interesting because we are the only um, Greek family who owns a great growth in Bordeaux. Actually, my father, who was born in Greece and who traveled uh, through um, Burma, India, China and Pakistan, made a lot of money importing cereals from, uh, from the company Bungi. My father was the owner of 1,600 food stores, grocery stores in, uh, in Paris, France, with a lot of real estate, prime real estate in Paris. And it happened that he was reading the FT on the flying back from London, and he saw that Chateau Margaux was on sale. Now, Chateau Margaux had been on sale for two years, and nobody actually wanted it. And this man, with his unique uh, perception of things and his vision, thought, I have to go down. So I came down with him. We came here. I was shocked by the first year seller. I mean, I had never seen anything as beautiful. And I'll always remember my father uh, shaking uh, Monsieur Ginesti's hand and saying, it's a deal. It was on this staircase behind me. People tell me I did a good job by taking over, but in fact, you have to realize that this place has existed way before us and will exist way after us. Just as I took over from my father, the next generation is stepping in gradually and my daughter Alexandra has just joined the Chateau Margaux team and she will be working for Chateau Margaux from London. So my father buys the estate, starts putting all his energy, and that's not to say little, and money in uh, all the restoration. And at first, the people were a bit taken aback by the fact that he was Greek, with a French, with a no, foreign accent in French. But he literally was at the origin of what everything that has happened in Bordeaux ever since. The first underground seller, the first wine consultant, the reintroduction of Pavillon Rouge, the new oak barrels, uh, the making up of the Pavillon Blanc, it was quite amazing. So that in two years time, people were saying, wow, this is extraordinary. Unfortunately, he died too young to see his success and the results. So I took over in 1980, not a special good time in Bordeaux when you think that the vintage was so-so. And people were kind of sneering because my father had done the 77 when there were some frost, 78 was so-so, 79 was so-so, 80 was not even so-so, and here we find ourselves. And, uh, but finally in the year 1982, um, America came in and made the market and from 1982 on, especially because the yield was very high, we've never had such a historical boom in Bordeaux wines. So today we are exactly on the eve of the 2012 harvest. It's a rather large vineyard with almost 100 hectares, uh, which actually so far looks extremely promising. The grapes will be harvested, they will be vinified in the cellar here, which is both a traditional cellar but also extremely modern now to benefit from all the advantages of modern technology. Uh, and once the wine will have been vinified, they will stay more or less two years in our very old cellars. Barrel aging is usually two years long before the wine is bottled. It's a very tiny quantity of white wine producing the Pavillon Blanc du Chateau Margaux since at least 300 years and a big quantity of red grapes, of course, most of them Cabernet Sauvignon. This is, this is more, almost 90% of the first wine um, and also a little bit of Merlot 
Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. Um, with these four varieties, we compose a number of blends depending on the quality of the wine. The first wine, of course, Chateau Margaux, then a second wine, the Pavillon Rouge du Chateau Margaux, and now a third wine. And to make the third one even better, we also have a fourth blend. So all this requires a lot of work, a lot of people, a lot of attention, and I would, I would say, above all, a lot of passion. And you're just a little piece of the chain. The soil is fantastic. The people working here are very, very efficient and knowledgeable. And we have the worldwide consumers uh, wanting to drink our wine. So we hope it goes on. Thank you.